Hey, it's Shabes, and welcome to another edition of AnyTube Digest, where we go over the best and not-so-best anime YouTube videos to come out this week, from the 5th of July to the 11th of July. I got a request video first, uh, and this one's from Victor, and he wanted me to talk about this video that I did have a bit on my radar, but I just happened to miss, because, you know, I wasn't subscribed to the guy, and, uh... Yeah, you know, whatever. But I did see Joe from Pause and Select tweet about it, and like he's like, these are real screen caps from like a video from a video essay. Um, this is linked it to this one, Ultra Deep Dive into Kaguya-sama's season three finale, which is probably where Victor got it. To be all honest with you, um, and it's certainly really interesting. Of a full full disclosure, um, I haven't seen any of Kaguya-sama yet, um, so I don't really have much of a horse in the race, one or the other, of how masterful the uh, last episode was the hour-long finale of season three um, and I think it's sort of this video seems to be a bit of a pushback on a previous video that I haven't seen um, that I guess got a lot of dislikes for for shower um, if that's how to pronounce it I'm sorry <laughs> um, and it's sort of just pushed away like guys I, I gave it an eight out of ten not a just not a ten out and he was apparently just very negative about it but it's still an eight out of ten it's one of those kinds of it's like oh yeah that easy trap to fall into because it's very easy it's much easier to complain about something than to explain why something's good so i can totally understand if, you, if that, that came off that way so it's sort of describing a little more analysis a little further analysis and critically calling, calling an ultra deep dive you know i i certainly think it was is uh, as there I, again i don't have a judge for it because i haven't seen the show myself um, but he does gush a lot about it and um, how much he likes certain aspects. And he's a very avid reader of the manga, has been for years. I guess he hadn't read it for a long time since this had come out. So he has been a very active and avid fan. Although he does kind of chide and belittle his audience by like, being like, how many of you have financially supported this series by buying merch like he had? I don't know if that was necessary, man, but okay. <laughs> I think there was, I think you know, the vibe I was getting that was sort of like a little toxic. Uh, and I think some commenters down there were bringing this up as well. And it's also kind of a weird, I guess it's not like the worst thing, but <laughs> I just get weird vibes when like, you look in the comments and he's hearting every comment. That's great, it's awesome. You've, it shows that you've read it, right? Uh, but then he replies to all of them. That's also great, you know, engaging with it. And then he hearts his own comment. Like he hearts his reply. And I know that's like such a nitpicky thing that'll be like call out or whatever. But I noticed that it was like, huh, <laughs> you know, it was like, mm, okay, I don't know. It's not like the biggest deal or anything, which is something that kind of stuck out to me. And no, nothing to do with the video itself, of course, I understand. Um, what are kind of the big things that kind of sets this video apart from a lot of other videos I've ever seen is the attention to detail in the audio quality and the video quality. And he kind of skewers it, pokes, um, criticizes the, the actual quality of the things that, and why he doesn't like streaming. And, you know, as someone who's made a video, you know, talking about the, the downsides of streaming, I think it was really interesting to bring in from a real audio perspective and like look at the this graph that like, if, it, the streaming uh, version like cuts off right here, whereas like official uploads of like an OP or something or uh, the Blu-ray, it has a full range of sound. And then I'm like, that's really interesting and awesome. But like, he doesn't really go further than that and maybe gives an example of where that's a bad, where like, what are, what are you missing? You know, he just kind of says, this is unacceptable and I feel sorry for people who are experiencing it this way. It's what the artists intended. Here's another thing that was a little contradictory to me. Um, and not, this is again, not, not a big deal, but it's something that I took notice of. Because he's he's priding himself. He's deliberately calling himself out of how he's the only one mentioning this of like, you should watch it on this, I was watching it on this big OLED TV uh, or I used this other vert monitor or something like that. And he shows screen caps of how expensive they are. You know, and like, okay. <laughs> you know, some people can like perfectly enjoy this as much or maybe even more than you. And they're watching it on their phone. <laughs> like, that's totally possible. Like, and who are you to judge? You know, there's some people who can't afford that sort of thing or college students or any, per, per, you know, particular thing. I think it's great that you can, you know, just champion these sorts of like you should see in the best quality possible 
Um, again, I made a video that's talking about stuff like that. But like, it's a whole other thing to be kind of like belittling your audience to, to not experiencing it that particular way and not being as uh, att attention detail as you are. But then the attention detail thing, you like throughout the like not I I noticed it in one particular part where you're praising or criticize I don't I think it was criticizing Q, um A1 pictures for this choice of like cen censoring with like a question mark and one shot with the heart shaped balloons or whatever and like you you credit A1 pictures not the director not the storyboarder for this episode not the episode director for this episode any particular name and i'm sure that there could be a, a you know this sort of thing there's a lot of speculation to it it could be an assortment of people you know it could be i don't really familiar with the manga i'm sure it's not a, a thing from the manga if you were complaining about it because you seem to have a lot more reverence for the manga than you do the anime even though you, you do clarify that yes the anime does a lot to improve it and things like that but all of your complaints were really just like comparing it to the manga and that's fine point that I do like when you bring it whenever you show the manga or bring it up you're showing it in two page spreads I love that uh it's sort of something that's like that's kind of how manga is intended to be read like the author, the artist is drawing it with the intention of the reader opening up two pages and not scrolling down vertically and I'm not just saying that personally that's Naoki Urasawa and his on his YouTube channel he talks about his hesitance in bringing his manga into a digital platform because people mostly scroll up with one page like this like on their phones or something when they're intending it to read like one big spread like like you know wide wide ways i guess <laughs> wide ways if that's not really a word but anyway <laughs> but i like that in the video you're presenting it that way because that's how it's intended to be not even like the one page you know the full page spreads but even just like the you know regular manga panel you know i just I just really liked that detail. Um, but you know, the other thing with like, I just found that a weird discrepancy, if you could call it that, where yeah, you're crediting A1 pictures and then you're making all this fuss about the detail and stuff. And then you're just very generic standard anime fan crediting the studio for everything and not the individuals, you know? I get that there are some things where like, there's no telling who could make that particular choice. Was it the storyboarder? Was the episode director maybe changed it to make that choice? Or like the storyboarder didn't intend that initially, perhaps? Or was it the overall director? The I don't know. Who who it could be a num number of people. Um, but at least somebody, you know? Maybe the, <laughs> if there if this I'm familiar with it, maybe if the the episode was storyboarded and episode directed by this and by the same individual, it's more likely than not it's that person, you know? That's fine, yeah, I don't know. It's just something that bothered me personally, as someone who's trying to have that level of detail in their own videos. Uh, but it's not a big deal. I think it was an interesting um, vid, and uh, certainly very unique. I think there's things about it that are like a little controversial, like sh shady or, or whatever. But like any videos like that, really, I think that makes those are the ones that are most interesting. This actually has something to talk about and something that's you know dial <laughs> that's like engaging to engage with <laughs> it's funny sorry this is off scripted so and no notes or anything so if you forgive my repetition and aimlessness in this if you've ever never seen me before if you happen to be watching this anyway um thank you so much victor for the request um i thought it was very interesting yeah all right now for some videos i thought were decent yeah they're pretty good <laughs> the first one's from murphy napier and she's got a One Piece video, choose your own One Piece adventure. And it is kind of like the um, the multi-branch type of YouTube videos that Markiplier makes with a date with Markiplier, heist with Markiplier, space with Markiplier, where she's linking two videos at the end and you're going off an adventure. And each of the videos are her narrating it. The first video, like in this brand, not this first video, but like the first video in the, in the adventure um, has like, actual S like foley uh, sound effects and, and an image the rest of it is just her and ca camera talking and describing it. it's like a D, &D thing almost um that's, that's neat that's cute um and i didn't i didn't necessarily go through the entire series because i have other videos to watch i didn't anticipate this to be more than six minutes 
I don't know why I, I didn't expect, but like that's a, it's a gargantuan effort. It's really interesting. It's only indecent because I don't know. Uh, it couldn't really. It, it wasn't engaging my interest in the way that I would want to explore the rest of it or got multiple paths. I did like how um, there's like an item. If you go to a certain path, you depending on the choices, you collect an item, and if you didn't get that item, you don't get to proceed in a certain way. Um, but like all the paths are pretty much identical. They're going in the same order of islands that the Straw Hats go on with like, you know, it's Orange Island, Island, Arlong, and Marity, you know, in the same kind of order, basically. Except like the thing that was kind of tedious about it and things that I didn't really want to make me want to continue. I think the furthest I got was uh, Alabasta. No, I got to like Jaya. I got to like the Jaya and then she gives you three options. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> because at that point I was realizing it's kind of one minute summaries of the arc. And and just sort of, it, it's not an individual adventure. It's not really customized in the same, no, I'm saying fully customization. Like, no, of course not. Uh, but it was just sort of just like, you get to an island and one piece reference. What do you do? And, and of course there's no names to any of this. The woman's, like it's all in vague terms and it's supposed to be up to the fan who's watching this to be like, oh, it's Buggy. Oh, it's Kobe. Oh, it's this other thing, you know? They were just kind of like, oh, those are the characters because she's describing them in that way. Um, but it's like experiencing One Piece fifth hand. Not second hand, not third hand. <laughs> you know, it's sort of just like, yeah, this is, you're making it sound kind of boring, actually. Um, no offense. I don't know. I really like the idea. It's very endearing and, and interesting um, and fun. <laughs> it's just not. It just wasn't for me in the same way. I'm not trying to. I wasn't even trying to look for the big production value or anything. There's a ton of videos, a ton of work as it is to do something like this, and it's it's great. But like I was lit. Like when I do these, um, I'm so fascinated by when Mark does the in heist or in space. When he did the in space one in in heist, I may I I recorded the branching paths so I can like see which ones so I can go back to them later, and I want to explore all of them. I'll go one path initially and just kind of see see where I end up and then I'll try to go back and explore the rest of it and get the full experience that's how I like experiencing these kinds of videos and I was just kind of realizing that like I think these kind of just go in the same order and there might be slight deviations I'm pro I might be underestimating it and yeah like I am, I'm not experiencing the full video here and so that's a little sus for digest usually I try to watch the whole thing um I don't know how long this is because she mentions that like she combines Thriller Bark and Summit War into one thing. I'm like, what? Like, Summit War is also many of its own things. So you're know, just adding another one on top of that. Like that's its own full. What do you mean you couldn't fit it into this? You're just loosely described. You're not even like, there's not even that much descriptive detail about it. The narration's not even that like engaging in the same way. It really is sort of just like guesswork. And it's not even guesswork because it's the same order, <laughs> you know? I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh on it. I might be, because I think like I'm becoming such a fucking One Piece fan that I think it's like all your shit, <laughs> all this shit's unex like not good enough or whatever. I Maybe that might be honestly the case because I also figure, I think I've mentioned, I've voiced this before how it's like, I didn't get into One Piece for this long. God damn it, why not? How, what what stopped me? And part of it, it wasn't that these guys stopped me, is that they didn't convince me well enough, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, low key, I don't know how adequate a lot of this content is in terms, you know. But anyway, there's no knock on Murphy. I think, I think this is like really endearing and awesome and like cool and fun, different for her kind of content. She's just a book reviewer, you know? <laughs> not just, I shouldn't just say that. But <laughs> it's sort of a thing where it's like, that's cool. Like, like that she's doing something completely out of the ordinary and different and, and fun, and, and it, it's cool. That's why I, I I liked it. I just wasn't the most whelmed by it, and I didn't finish it. <laughs> That's why it's, yeah, I think I rambled about it long enough. But yeah, every episode of Pokemon, but it's puppets. Papermon, episode one, from Swade, the guy who was um having, oh my god, my I'm gonna get sued like for real. 
and my channel's gonna get taken away, so all those videos are gone. And then nothing happened. <laughs> I, I, I watched the update video and then I didn't cover it on, I think it was either the week where I didn't wanna cover any videos that week or, um, or it was just like not much to actually comment on, just be like, this is a thing. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think it was more interesting to actually cover the, the start of this new journey and stuff. Um, it's interesting. I, You know what I kind of got the vibe of? That, like, he didn't really have to start from the first episode. I think there are definitely ways to, to like, archive your co old content and find ways for, for old viewers to, to watch it. But I don't know if he wants to because that content's probably kind of old by now. So he wants to redo it now that he's gotten better at making videos. You know what I mean? He just he just wants to, he's kind of, I felt the vibe. He didn't really say it, but I got the vibe. This is an excuse for a clean slate. And let's just do this over again and, and do better this this time. You know, now that I'm better, now that he's better at making videos and stuff. And that's great. I like kind of them proven it's fun. Although that was a little bit of a shame for me. And it also just feels like, well, now you're never going to fucking finish this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially for how kind of uh, resource intensive this seems to be, at least. I guess it's maybe not that big of a deal. But about half the video is dedicated to this recap of the episode in puppet form with like little um, paper things. And he shows like I like the intro where he's kind of showing how he's making them. That's pretty cool. There was a weird discrepancy at one point where um, Ash is, run is biking away from Misty. And I like the effect with like the stick figure in the back being Misty and stuff. But like it's a paper cut out of Pikachu. Whereas you can see the thumbnail, Pikachu is just, like a, normally in every other shot that I've noticed, he was in like, a, he was like a little puff ball and that was cute. I like that. And I'm excited to see what, how, how, what he does for the other Pokemon that Ash does. Um, maybe they're all in that like kind of 3D style it could be kind of funny I also like his integration of the, the kind of the LED sort of set behind him that he's putting the, the the puppet characters in front of I think that was really neat I don't know if that was like a after the green screen after effects type of deal but um, it looked practical I don't know it just seemed kind of fun um, I think the the actual creative process here is, is good the transformative nature of it I mean it's okay <laughs> I was I was getting the vibe of like I would very much rather be watching the episode. Um, it didn't feel like a very suitable replacement. I was trying to, no, I just not know he's trying to place it or anything. Also, I can kind of understand why he got knocked that hard on the Pokemon content. If like, if this was the structure of his older videos where he recaps the episode very specifically and not even in a tongue in cheek transformative way, but literally just kind of recapping it almost, maybe some jokes here and there, but yeah. And then his thoughts, I can kind of see maybe why they would, perhaps. It doesn't feel the most transformative, but this feels very transformative, of course, because he's not using any actual footage or audio from it, which is great. And that's a, that's a creative way a creative uh, way around it. Um, I was much more interested in his thoughts once it got to them. And then when he gets to them, they're not very, it's not very visually engaging, right? Because it's just his avatar. And then the, the maybe references the footage he just made in the back or something like that but um honestly i think if he did his thoughts if he constructed his thoughts in a way and then he articulates his thoughts through the puppets in terms of like oh when this scene happens and do, 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 and he's describing it that way using the puppets i actually think that would be a better synergy of visual visual and audio um the the jokes and the kind of the the abridging of the first episode is okay. It's much more visually engaging when it's, the, it's much more visually engaging than it is audially engaging. Also, there was a kind of a weird tension going on for me where there's a couple of moments where he's like, this dead ass happens in the episode. And then other times where I'm like, I can't tell if that's a joke. Well, I, Cause I'm bad at that personally. I'll, I'll just say that that's, that's a personal weakness of mine. I can't usually tell when people are joking or being sarcastic that well. I'm not a very good radar for that. Um, so I guess in one hand, it's it's good that he actually shows you that it's like, oh, this they did actually say this. But he has to caveat that every time because he's layering it with so much of this jokey humor and abridging it. You know, um, you can't really do that that often. And I think he did it one too many times where I was just like, and I, I almost didn't believe him when he was saying that like, oh, they, the mom gets electrocuted for 14 whole seconds. And it's like this, I didn't, like, this is actually how long it is. And I'm like, 
okay, for, for how jokey the rest of the video has been, I kind of don't believe you. I kind of would rather see it for myself, you know? Um, but that's just, you know, and that that, that kind of created a bit of distrust uh, in the create, you know, between the audience and the, and the creator, for me at least. Um, not a big deal, I guess, but things like that. And it was just kind of hard to, to engage with uh, in a, in a way uh but yeah i think his thoughts were much worth more interesting and like insightful and uh, yeah i just fi i figure that the actual structure of it's kind of clunky as it is right now but good on him uh, picking himself back up and and uh continuing on the on the journey here well restarting the journey basically and uh, god <laughs> endless content i guess but you know assuming he can um keep it up regularly fair enough but yeah um, interesting. Good to see him back, uh, back on his feet in that way. Salty DK Dan, um, who I remember commenting on my JoJo video, I think, and that was really, uh, flattering at the time. And I think he followed me, like, way later or something. Like, he found me after the fact. Um, really funny guy. And I'm happy he's, he's making more kind of, like, YouTuber-y type of content and would be more of an online type of presence. It's, it's cool to see. Um... I checked this out because I, you know, I was up to him, but I don't usually watch his stuff all that often because it's not like related to stuff I'm interested in or whatever. I loved his JoJo Part 6 um, fan comic he made way back in the day uh, and he didn't get very far in, but that's okay. Like it was, it was great. Um, have you heard about the greatest anime of all time? Neko Nyan Sugar Time, something like that. I think it's a YouTube series from 2010 and it's the, I've seen clips of it. It's sort of like the, um, it's very hard to tell whether it's skewering anime and just kind of making fun of it or being kind of a lovely parry and oh actually that's actually kind of accurate or whatever because it really toes that line because there's there's slightly bits of like this is way too blisteringly insulting to <laughs> to this kind of anime that they're they're skewering here to you know there's aspects of it i'm just like this seems a little too absurd and other times where I'm like, yeah, that that's so accurate. That's so funny. But yeah, he uh, gets his friends together and they react to it. And I'll admit the the, the commentary isn't necessarily the, the, the highlight for this. I do think they're, I don't want to make comparisons, but <laughs> there, there are other channels that like, they've done this sort of style of group chat, react to a thing, riffing on it. And the, the the chemistry is a lot more, and the characters, like the four his four friends, I I didn't have a a great sense of the four of them, and maybe because you know I just have to watch more of their content, or whatever. Then that's fair. Um, but in terms of distinct personalities and like that sort of thing, um, I think there was more comedy being derived in Salty's editing than there was um, from the actual uh, like thing that they're reacting to, because. I think part of the comedy, part of the comedy there, where he was adding in the in the editing, was the subtitles, the closed captioning, basically, and the way that they're kind of like ip, ip, and and uh, inintelligible, and he, he's making jokes in that way, and that's fun, that's additive, and that, may, that improves the video, but it made me realize that was like you're trying to punch up the what's being shown here because it's not that funny, it's not that interesting, you know what I mean? I was getting those vibes. Um, it's like you have to punch this up in order to kind of make this moment more funny because either your commentary is non-existent or because I think there was a moment where you where they said like we didn't say much here so I have to explain what happened and, <laughs> so it's like yeah you're kind of calling yourself out here you know it's, it's, um, and that happens I, mean, I get it you know sometimes it, it's not funny enough or, or whatever and it's just what you got and that's fair I get that um, I, I ultimately really like the video it is kind of long, all things considered, considering the uh, the subject matter and, and sort of like the breadth of, you know, like the, I don't know, <laughs> maybe if you tighten it up in a way that like you get the absolute funniest moments, maybe it could be a tighter video, perhaps, and I wouldn't feel as much of like the a bit of gaps and slog and, eh, you know, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it. It was it was really fun. Good time. Yeah. Beyond Ghibli, Life in Color, Harry, Hyoka, and Clanad. And um, I, he's talked to me a little bit about this video and stuff and giving uh, um, some attention. What do you think of this sort of thing here and there? And, and I've, I've been happy to give feedback and stuff. Um, 
And now the video proper, I honestly, like, you know, I was just like, oh, yeah, it's just like a Harhi video, or whatever. Um, and it's also a Hyoka video, and, and he talks, to his, he gave me his like his takes on Hyoka and stuff. And it doesn't, it's not as it's it's very tastefully reflected in the video itself. I'll give it that in this given <laughs> of what he talked about. And like, he doesn't give away you you would actually probably blink and you miss it. He doesn't seen After Story in this video. He's seen the original Clan ad, and that's it. And that's interesting, you know, because most people these days, especially when they're kind of talking about these older series in retrospect at this point, you'd kind of expect to have them talk about everything. Um, and I also think I just realized that now that I said that, he didn't talk about disappearance either. Uh, disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, which is also kind of a, a significant chunk. That's interesting. Maybe they kind of warrant their own videos, perhaps. Um, maybe that was the call. I don't know. Interesting. But like, and I was also trying to really wrap my head around the, the title and what it is, is like all three of these have in common is the kind of the boring MC or like the colorless kind of MC, like dull and everything. And girl comes into their life and brightens it up type of that sort of through line. Um, but other than that, it really is kind of a besides that small through line. It's just three separate kind of an anthology video of sorts. And I can't knock anthology vids because um, I'm in neck deep in the middle of making one <laughs> of just like nine separate videos about Naruto that I things that I liked. Um, so I get it. And I, I was realizing it and watching it. I was just like, yeah, this is just kind of three videos stitched together in one. Hmm. Yes, <laughs> you know, um, and I. I sound like a fucking hypocrite. Like I actually, I don't, I hate to say this, but it did kind of like, okay. <laughs> it gave me kind of like a mm, feeling. I don't know what it is. Um, I like the through line, but there wasn't as much commentary betwixt the three of them. Did like, if you explored this area more about where the MC starts versus where the MC ends up, and maybe you find commonalities and differences with the three of them, and you're talking about Haruhi, Hyoka, and Clan Ed kind of together as a as a thing. But instead, it's very compartmentalized. Here's the Hyoka section, here's the Haruhi section, here's the Clan Ed section, and that's it. And that could be fine. I think it's good to also be isolated experiences. You know, it kind of maybe, maybe tripped it up actually, because I think I was able to realize the life and color meaning because there was a commonality with the Hyoka section, the Clan Ed section, where your section starts with describing this MC and everything and kind of giving the introduction the way the show gives it to you. And you do do that for Haruhi, except it's cap, except it doesn't start with the, with Kyon. It starts with your experience with seasonals and the imp impact that, that Haruhi had. And that's good. I like that sort of thing. And it, it makes it kind of have this extra charm of a Haruhi. And I think you had, an incre had incredible points about the things it was doing mistakes and all and i think that the way you word it because we've had big arguments about endless eight and how much he fucking hates it and i kind of an apologist for it even though i haven't seen it because <laughs> i just like it on principle you know i'm just like that's so crazy man i love that i respect the shit out of it and i think he has the same take where like he doesn't have to like it but it's sort of just like that's crazy that a show would do that you know and it has successes and failures type of thing and I, I think we have pretty much the same we're on the same page with that um yeah anyway but it, you're, you it was very um subtle for the most part I, except for like the very end of the Haruhi section where it's like to a piece of sh and then it like it cuts to like a music cut and it, now it's clan ad I'm like that's a weird tone to transition to clan ad just for me I was just like oh like it didn't land the way I think the way I think it needed it to, or the way you were expecting, at least for me. Maybe other it worked for other people, of course. Um, but yeah, I was just like, mm, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, but like I enjoyed the the analysis. I've only seen Clan Ad out of the three of these, and I loved your take on it because it's like no one told me how funny this thing was. I'm like, yeah, I actually like it more than After Story for that reason. Um, it is kind of more endearing and fun in that way and uh, engaging. 
And it, it, it is really interesting how you kind of gloss over the fact that you haven't seen, you didn't make a point of it at all, that you just haven't talked about After Story at all or showed anything from it or whatever. I was like, huh, that's a that's an interesting take. I, I don't know. That, that, that stuck out to me. Haruhi section also stuck out to me a lot. Yoga's, yeah, that's a good take. That's a good, that's a good direction to take it with the artistic thing and, and like the different mediums and stuff like that. Like that's, that's neat. Okay. <laughs> and it's just kind of a, that is a yoga section, I guess. <laughs> but I did, I did steer him. I did uh, point to him, um, replay values, whole series on yoga. And he's like, how, how can I talk? <laughs> Sorry if that's private or whatever, but I, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like what do i have to say about it but, you know um but i think it came out really good dude um it was fun nice nice time but yeah those are those are my thoughts about it also you were like oh thank you to my patient patrons i'm like your patient patrons fucking mine are like <laughs> like waiting for godot oh my god they can't <laughs> So, are you making a video? Maybe. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Now, God, give me that with the best videos of the week. The ones I, I really liked. Uh, and this first one's from Magical uh, Live Reaction. The Tokyo Mew Mew New is sponsored. You got me. You got me. You, you dead ass had me thinking that this was a sponsored thing. I was gonna comment, I was like, oh, I love the new avatar. It's so cute and good. I love it to death. Oh, I just noticed the banner too. Oh my God, it's amazing. And I just realized you put it on all of your thumbnails. Mmm, nice. It's always been there. What are you talking about? <laughs> I will, I'll never forget the green the green avatar, the green monster looking avatar. You, you can't convince me, I can't erase history like that, man. I know, I'm on to you. <laughs> uh, but the, the avatar is really cute. Um, but man, that was so funny. Um, kind of reacting in that, into that, whatever the fuck that was, uh, fan thing. I hate to spoil the video for for people and to be like unironic because it's sarcastic. I'm, I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna play into a joke very easily, okay? Uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, that was so funny. Oh my God. And you play it totally serious. Um, you got me. And I just, I enjoyed it a lot. It's very basic of me, but yeah, ba basic pleasures of life, you know, <laughs> as it be. Um, although I, I, I don't know if, the gen if it was genuine if you had never actually seen Tokyo Mew Mew. And I thought that'd be it, but I, I don't know, whatever. I, I, that's pretty much it because <laughs> that's pretty much the whole video um but it was fun i enjoyed it nice job can you believe uh i actually am starting to slightly hurt from how much i'm smiling that means it's a good digest isn't it we're just all happy donkey dory donkey <laughs> 9 01 p.m legend of dragon ball tale full film 11 minutes but full film come on uh <laughs> studio stray dog ancient mystery me is the uploader but it's the that's their whole thing is the uh, animation guys and they have a pretty regular frequent output actually even after putting out this out five days ago they put out another like animated youtube intro um and a bunch of other things like they're 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 cranking man but they've been working on this for oh my god three years sheesh because there's like a, a fucking trailer from three years ago <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Anyway, um, but yeah, finally the full film came out. It's doing very, very well. I was noticing a lot of people um, were like clipping it and not putting any like you don't have your watermark, a watermark or anything on it. Um, at least I don't think so. No. Um, so I was seeing some people kind of stealing some shit. That's too bad. But yeah, it happens with anime. I guess it comes with the territory. Um, but I'm happy to see that the actual VOD, the actual original is doing very well um so far um which is great to see but the actual like substance of this i really gotta show my roommate actually i, have, I don't know if he saw it yet um big you know he's a dragon ball fan but um man this is really cool i just like that it wasn't an adaptation of anything it was fully invented and kind of a re alternate history sort of thing although as, as a dragon ball you know I, I wouldn't say fan for me personally i've seen dragon ball just only a couple months ago i finished it the original 
and I've seen a lot of Z through osmosis and stuff, um, but I still got to like kind of watch it in full. I still want to do that, even though I've seen Kai a bunch and I know exactly what happens for a lot of it. Mm, you know, it's, it's unfortunately kind of to shred for me, but this was really exciting because you really didn't know what was supposed to happen. Um, they're taking their place during the Tenkai, one of the Tenkai Ichi tournaments. Um, and it's not an adaptation of anything particularly like Vegeta just shows up knows who Goku is already I think and um fights Broly <laughs> and then Goku has a I don't know it's hard to spoil but like gets a new form just gets a form that I've never seen before that's bold that's really cool you only see that sort of thing in like you know deviant art you know kind of just like put like Gohan Blanco whatever you know um you just see some of those like Super Saiyan 6 or whatever, right? Like, wow. Um, but to see it an actual like realized and animated, that's and like it seemed very fresh and unique. It what it had elements of being a Super Saiyan, and that's obviously the visual callback of like, <laughs> you know, but like it, it's totally new. Um, I really liked that. That was really cool. Um, again, not the hugest fan or anything like that, but like, yeah, the, the detail, I like how you were actually you were willing to have your own character design as well. Character designs um, have the have a Toriyama esqueness to them, but and obviously it's the same structure and everything. So you know that's Vegeta and that's Goku and that's Chi Chi, whatever. Um, but the eyes seem like the pupils and the eyes seem a little bit a lot bigger. The mouth seem a bit wider. I don't know. There's some, there's things about it. There's like this is definitely a person's personal art style, which I liked and. Um, I like all the, the FX you put in here with like the lighting stuff and how shaky cam kind of old kung fu movie it looks. Um, the color palette's really gorgeous. Um, voice acting kind of kind of just gives me the vibes of uh, you know <laughs> a YouTube video, I guess, like with YouTube voice actors. I don't know. Maybe that's like oh the professional voice actors. I'm like okay, but like modern day dubbing, I guess, and that's not a turn off or anything. Um, it's a turn off. This is sorry. No, 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 no. Um, it's just something I noticed. I'm just like, this sounds like an abridged <laughs> in terms of the performance of it, I guess, is something about it that kind of seemed. Mm. Uh, but I just really enjoyed it. It was very, very impressive. Of course, the animation sort of speaks for itself. Um, I hate to gloss over it like that. It is kind of the main event here is how this thing is visually portrayed. But like Prudos, not just to the ba the animation, but to the backgrounds. Again, the character designs, the uh, fully sort of things like with all the things they're doing with sound, with the effects. Because they said like not even any Dragon Ball audio is being used. So like and none of their sound effects and the music. It's it's all original. That's really great. That's really impressive. Um, yeah, uh, I'm I'm really impressed. Of course, as I think everyone should be and and is justifiably so. Um, really great work. Uh, hell yeah. Hope something comes of it. I mean, that'd be, that'd be dope. No, I, maybe the, I mean, what comes of it is the attention and the, you know, the means to hopefully do more like this is the idea. But like, you know what I mean? I, I just, it's just like seeing something, uh, even more than 11 minutes, something even more substantial. Um, this, the sky's the limit at this point, hopefully. Yeah. I was steered toward a video by Doc Taku. The hidden influence of Dungeons and Dragons on anime and manga, fantastic. I just finished, I was like, I finished it and I was like, that was a banger. Whoo, yeah. Um, very succinct, very informative interviews and, and like quote, the direct quotes and everything, not just kind of pulled out of the ass and just kind of assumed, um, cited from interviews and stuff, informative in a sort of thing. Cause like I had heard that you know, um, Record of Lotus War was based on a um, on a Dungeons and Dragons game. Not really. It's this thing called replays, I believe, is what the, what it was. It's sort of this because Dungeons and Dragons wasn't really taking off in Japan, and they because it was kind of just too vague. But this is particular professor that was like, let's kind of modify it in a way that we have the story all laid out for you, and it's a tabletop RPG where you can actively play as a character and go through this established story. Um, and that's probably a thing in Dungeons and Dragons too, of course, like pre-built worlds and stuff like that. But in the eighties, when this is just like they, these guys who in, in Japan, who um, 
were creating it or, or were doing these replay stuff, it wasn't a thing, it seems. I don't know. But then, you know, they're talking about how this other video, like Dungeons and Dragons, they were trying to make it into a computer game. And that eventually became this game called Wizardry. And Wizardry is cited all over the place as the inspiration for Final Fantasy and uh, Zelda and Dragon Quest. It's like literally all of them. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. So it was just like so I like rock solid, air sealed. This is the this is the influence. And uh, I was really impressed. Um, you know, the, the actual like video craft is not something that's super mind blowing or anything, but it's very efficient. I really like having Doc Taku on screen as well. Um, and he has a very good on screen presence, I think. Nothing too wacky or YouTuber y, um, but something that's very approachable. And um, he definitely seems to um, come, I've, I've, he says Avita saying at the end, and I'm, so I'm pretty sure it's German. Um, but he has a very thick accent, but nothing that gets in the way. Um, I think it was great. I really loved it. You guys should definitely check this out. Thank you for whoever. Sorry, uh, I don't have the DM on me <laughs> that, that sent me this, but this was fantastic. Thank you. And lastly, uh, it's your boy Pico, the spicy warlord. I remember covering his. I actually remembered, like, I was starting to watch this video on Hidemari Sketch as a work of art, and the the icon, his channel icon, looked a little familiar. And I started watching a little, and his editing style, his delivery, I'm like. Is this the Yeltsuba guy? And it was like the video I covered. I think it was a request video um, for that, that Yeltsuba video. And uh, that one's a much longer one. And I realized he has made a lot of other ones, like a whole hour-long Nanambiori video and, and other things like that. But Hitamari, like the hour-long Hitamari sketch video just kind of like grabbed my attention. I was like, yes. And yeah, uh, it was linked in, in my, di uh, my Discord for patrons. Um, thank you for that. But I was intending on watching the video, so I, I, I did have that, you know, just saying. <laughs> but like, uh, fantastic. Loved it. I think it was pretty much in the same tier for me as the Eltsuba video, where I was just really impressed by it. I love how much editing is being put into this in terms of the kind of the gags and the memes. And um, I will admit some of it feels like kind of a bit of a ramble stream of consciousness bit and kind of going on little detours of like describing Iyashike slice of life type of stuff. But I did appreciate the structure of the video really going season by season and how different and what what each one adds and how distinct they are from each other. There really wasn't too much analysis of the structure in terms of how out of order the days are. I actually would have really liked a little closer analysis of what is the difference between watching going from episode one to episode two what kind of things maybe are, is going through the audience's head when they go in that order. Because, like, yeah, you can just pick any random episode the same way you could do for Oja Majidori me, I'm sure. But at the same time, there is something very interesting that there's that each episode very deliberately has a date attached to it, you know? And so there really is a defined chronology. Whereas Oja Majidori me, you don't really know whether a day has passed from the last episode or a week has passed. You know that by the end of the season, a full year has passed because they, they talk about that. Um, every single season, there's like a whole year has passed and they're growing up. Um, but in terms of like week by week, there's there's no specific thing about that. And apparently, you know, there is a way you can watch Hitamari Sketch in the actual chronological order, but you actually made it sound way more interesting to go in that broadcast order because of how different the different seasons are. And like the kind of the show kind of looks very much the same all throughout because of the uh, various art choices, artistic choices. Um, but you were really able to demonstrate and show that, yeah, this is what all first season looks like. And then you get to this season and it does look different and you were able to really sell that. Um, I thought it was fantastic. And it was like really made me want to watch Hidemari Sketch. You know, obviously does like spoil to the degree of like giving you the full structure of where this arc goes. But I think that's good. I think my um, Ojibaj Doremi video kind of does a similar thing. Describe it like one of the cool things about that show that I didn't know until watching it was that it's every season, each of the four seasons is a year of school. And then at the end of it, they're going to graduate into middle school and that sort of thing. And, and that's a significant part of the show. And I had no idea about that. And it ended up being a really favorable aspect to me. Um, but it doesn't really sell it itself that way, right? Or most fans don't even either. Um, but having it here was like, I kind of knew that and I kind of knew there was a graduation aspect to it because I saw the OVA saying graduation. But I didn't know that it was graduation of 
two of the not really the main it's the there's a core cast of four characters and it's only the two of them that's not even the main main character the mascot like um you know it's not even her that's graduating it's these two other girls um and it's like oh that's interesting okay and i think that like prepared me mentally i was like i actually want to watch this show with those expectations very good expectations that you laid out in this video um i just think it was a really really great job uh again and then also the like an hour but it doesn't let up steam in terms of its editing prowess which i really respect and appreciate um i thought it was a really great time yeah love this video really great effort and um awesome loved it Woo! That'll do it for this installment of AnTube Digest. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are great. You have a great week. Yo, peace.